Hey everyone, in this video we'll be looking at linear equation word problems that involve money. The key to these word problems is to understand that each coin has a value and we need to include that value when setting up our equations. So looking at our first example, Mark has twice as many dimes as quarters. If he has $7.20 in total, how many of each coin does he have? We'll start with our let statement. Let x be equal to. Well, he has twice as many dimes as quarters. So the number of dimes is defined in terms of the number of quarters. So x will be the number of quarters. And then 2x will be the number of dimes. Now, if we take the value of the dimes plus the value of the quarters, that's going to be equal to $7.20. So each quarter is worth 25 cents, so times the number of quarters that he has, plus 10 cents times the number of dimes, that's going to give us $7.20. So we're replacing the Q for quarters and the D for dimes in our simple equation in terms of X. We wind up with 0.25 times X, plus 0.1 times 2x equals 7.2. Now simplifying the left side, we have 0.25x plus 0.2x equals 7.2, which is 0.45x equals 7.2. And next, we're going to divide both sides by 0.45. And that's going to give us x equals 16. Now, rereading the problem, how many of each coin does he have? Well, if x equals 16, that means he has 16 quarters. And 2x, so 32 dimes. Okay, so there's our first word problem that involves money. Our next example, the number of dimes in Alexa's change purse is two less than the number of nickels. If the total of the dimes and nickels is equal to $1.30, how many dimes does she have? Starting with our let statement. So the number of dimes is two less than the number of nickels. So dimes is defined in terms of nickels, so x will be the number of nickels. And then x minus 2 is the number of dimes. Okay, so if we take the value of our nickels, add it to the value of the dimes, we're going to get $1.30. So each nickel is 5 cents. Each dime is 10 cents, and that's $1.30. So rewriting this equation in terms of x, we have 0 0.05 times x plus 0 0.1 times x minus 2 equals 1.3. Now we can approach this problem similar to the last problem and keep everything in terms of a decimal, or another strategy is to take this equation and multiply it by a factor of 100. The reason to do that, we would remove the decimals in each term. So this would simplify the equation to become 5x plus 10 times x minus 2 equals 130. Remember that we have to multiply each term by the 100. Now another thing that sometimes trips students up, when I'm multiplying 100 by the 0 0.05 times x, think of it as multiplying 2 times 3 times 4, a simpler problem. If I was to evaluate 2 times 3 times 4, I would first do 2 times 3 and get 6, and then I would take 6 and multiply it by 4. So thinking that same way, 
When I multiply 100 by the 0 0.05 times x, I'll do 100 times 0 0.05, which is 5, and then we'll multiply that by x. Okay, same thing even when I have an x minus 2 in the parentheses, right? 100 times 0.1 first, and then that's 10, we multiply by the quantity x minus 2. Okay, so now we have our simplified equation. So we'll distribute the 10. We get 5x plus 10x minus 20 equals 130. 15x minus 20 equals 130. Add 20 to both sides. So we have 15x equals 150. Multiply both sides by 1 15th. Or divide by 15. X equals 10. Now rereading the problem. How many dimes does she have? So if x equals 10, then x minus 2, which is 8, is the number of dimes. Okay, so we'll stop here for a second. So we've looked at two different ways to solve these equations, right? In our first example, we kept everything in terms of decimals. And in this example, we multiplied the equation by a factor of 100, so that instead of working with decimal values, we had integer values. Both strategies will get us the correct answer. It's a matter of which you prefer. Hey, and on top of that, always have your simple equation. You don't have to write this out, but if you find it helpful that you're not forgetting to multiply by the value of each coin, then I would encourage you to continue to do so. Next up, Johan has 15 coins made up of only nickels and quarters that have a total value of $2.75. Determine how many of each coin there are. So beginning with our let statement, let x be equal to. Well, he has 15 coins in total made up of nickels and quarters. So we have a choice. We can make x nickels or quarters. So let's make x the number of nickels. Then the number of quarters is going to be 15 minus x. And just to give us an idea, right, if he had six nickels, then we would do 15 minus six and he'd have nine quarters, right? So if he has X nickels, he's going to have 15 minus X quarters because he has 15 coins in total. Now the value of the nickels plus the quarters is $2.75. So each nickel is five cents, each quarter is 25 cents, and that's $2.75. So in terms of x, we have 0 0.05 times x plus 0.25 times 15 minus x. And that's going to be equal to $2.75. Now again, I'll multiply this equation by 100. So that's going to give us 5 times x plus 25 times the quantity 15 minus x equals 275. Now we want to distribute the 25 in. So we have 5x plus 375 minus 25x equals 275. Combining our like terms, negative 20x plus 375 equals 275. We can subtract 375 from both sides of our equation. That leaves us with negative 20x equals 275. And then we'll put, no, oh, not 275, negative 100. We'll divide both sides by negative 20. So that gives us x equals 5. Now rereading the problem, determine how many of each coin. So we want the number of nickels and the number of quarters. So if x is 5, that means 
Johanna has five nickels and ten quarters. Okay, on to our last example. A piggy bank contains only pennies, nickels, and dimes. The number of pennies, nickels, and dimes are consecutive even integers in that order. If there is a total of $2.10 in the piggy bank, how many dimes are there? So this is our first example where we now have three types of coins. So we're going to have an extra piece to our let statement. So let x be equal to. So it says the pennies, nickels, and dimes can be represented by consecutive even integers in that order. So that means x is the number of pennies. x plus 2 is the number of nickels. And x plus 4 is the number of dimes. So the total value of our pennies added with our nickels added with our dimes is $2.10. So each penny is one cent. Each, dime, uh, each nickel is five cents. Each dime is 10 cents. And that gives us a total of $2.10. So in terms of x, we have 0 0.01 times x plus 0 0.05 times x plus 2 plus 0.1 times x plus 4 equals $2.10. Again, I think in this example, it's best to multiply the equation by 100. But if you prefer to work in decimals, by all means, do so. So multiplying this whole equation by 100, that's going to give us 1 times x plus 5 times x plus 2 plus 10 times x plus 4 equals 210. And again, just another reminder, right? If we're doing 100 times 0 0.05 times x plus 2, right, we're going to do 100 times 0 0.05, which is 5, and then we're multiplying the 5 by the x plus 2 that remains. Okay, so that's why this is our simplification when we multiply each term by 100. So now cleaning it up further, we would distribute the 5 and the 10. So we have x plus 5x plus 10 plus 10x plus 40 equals 210. Combining all of our like terms, 16x plus 50 equals 210. We can subtract 50 from both sides. 16x equals 160. Multiply both sides by 1 16th. And we get x equals 10. Now rereading the problem, how many dimes are there? So the number of dimes is x plus 4, so x is 10, so we have 14 dimes in the piggy bank. Okay, so there are the word problems that involve money. Make sure you have a well-defined let statement. Hey, if you find it helpful, create this simple equation, especially if that's a reminder for you to include the value of each coin. Hey, replace the pennies, nickels, dimes in this example with x, and then solve our equation. Okay, so look these over again, practice on your own so that you feel confident with these types of word problems.